Hello, Woodburn High School students. Are you ready to apply to college? Me too. Well, here's what you need to know to apply for financial aid. As you already know, college is expensive. College can cost up to $240,000 for four years. You can buy a 3,200 square bill in Houston with that money and still have $30,000 in your pocket, according to Forbes. However, education is the best investment you can make and there are resources that can help you pay that money. And the best resource for paying that money is FAFSA and the ORSA. But what is FAFSA and the ORSA, you may ask? I will start by explaining FAFSA. The FAFSA, or Free Application for Federal Student Aid, is an application for high school and college students to seek financial aid from the federal government. The amount of money that is given in federal grants, loans, and work-study funds are around $120 billion. This is great and all, but a downside to FAFSA is that it only applies to U.S. citizens or legal permanent residents. That is where ORSA comes in, but I will talk about ORSA later. Well, where can you find these resources, you may ask? You can find them in the College of Career website, in the Woodburn School District page. I will show this right now. You can access the FAFSA and the College of Career website. All you have to do is go to the Applying for Financial Aid section, and it should be this, this link right here. This link will then lead you to the FAFSA website. FAFSA opens up each year on October 1st. For example, the class of 2018 was able to apply as of the 1st of October of 2017 for the 2018-2019 academic year, their freshman year of college. While FAFSA doesn't necessarily have a deadline, some colleges do want you to finish your FAFSA by a certain date to be considered for aid. It's always best to complete any financial aid paperwork as soon as possible. A key tip that I suggest you guys to do is create your FSA ID and if possible, help your parents create their FSA ID. But what is the FSA ID, you may ask? Well, the FSA ID is a username password combination that will allow you to complete your FAFSA and help you sign the FAFSA electronically. If your parents have an FSA ID, they will also be able to electronically sign it. This means that you will be able to submit your completed FAFSA there at the spa. But what if your parents don't have a social security number, which is a requirement for the FSA ID? Well, don't worry, because if that is your case, still complete the full FAFSA application. However, an extra step you will have to do is that once you get to the stage where your parents need to sign it, you will have to print out the form and send it through mail to the address that is shown in the form. Making your FSA ID before the FAFSA date will help you finish a form faster and ultimately get more money. This is great and all, but something you should always remember is to send your FAFSA to three colleges you would want to go and a community college. This will help your dream colleges find out how much money they can give you in financial aid and will help you meet certain scholarship requirements. Sending your FAFSA to a community college will also be your backup resort because if you don't end up attending your dream college, then you can attend the community college tuition free through the Oregon Promise program. Once you're done with your FAFSA, you must pay attention to three key factors, your EFC, the amount of grants you are able to receive, and the amount of subsidized and unsubsidized loans you are able to receive. EFC stands for Expected Family Contribution, and it really is just an estimate of how much money your parents can contribute to your college education. Colleges will use this EFC to determine how much aid they can give you for free. You must also pay attention to the amount of Pell Grant money you are able to receive. Pell Grants is free money that you are able to receive and the maximum amount you are able to receive for the year 2017 is $5,920. This money can change over the years, however a pro tip is to fill out your FAFSA early because first hand, first serve. On the other hand, loans are monies you will eventually have to pay off. However, there are two types of loans, subsidized loan and unsubsidized loans. Subsidized loans are loans that you did not build up interest during your four years in college. For example, if I were to take out a $5,000 subsidized loan, I would have to pay only $5,000 after I leave college. On the other hand, unsubsidized loans are loans that will build up interest during your four years in college. You still won't have to pay your loan during your college years, but you have to pay the interest that built it up during those years. The maximum amount of money that you can receive from loans can vary. The ORSA, or the Oregon Student Aid Application, is an alternative to FAFSA for undocumented students and DACA recipients. 
This application opens up every October of every year. This application is the same process as FAFSA, but the major difference inside the ORSA and FAFSA is that the amount of money is lower, around 4000 or less for maximum amount of help. And this is because the money is not coming from the US government, but from Oregon's funds. Well, that is all I have on the ORSA and FAFSA guys, but if you want to continue researching and get more information on this application, check the description below for websites you can go for more information. Well, good day, Woodburn Scholars, and good luck.